Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today on Our Ventura TV. I'm your host, Sandra Cepak, and our special guest in studio today is Tanya Allen Gould. She's the author of the children's book, Samuel T. Moore of Corte Magor. Thank you so much for joining us on the program, Tanya. Thank you so much for We're having me. We're going to talk me. a little bit about your book and um, what it means in terms of a message for children and parents. And I know I've had the um, pleasure of seeing the book uh, and taking a look at it. And the concept of it behind it is really a great story. Um, I know that personally, your daughter had a little bit to do with this as well, so we're going to get into that as well. But let's talk about the message behind the book. It sends a powerful message about overcoming adversity for children, uh, overcoming bullying, uh, getting to know yourself better, and overcoming things and making dreams come true for a lot of kids, and daring to dream, and giving yourself that chance to overcome adversity. And I just want you to talk a little bit about that message. Thank you, thank you. Well, the main character is actually Samuel T. Moore. Uh, he's a land and sea fiddler crab. And he lands on the idyllic shore of Corte Magor, and he wants to stay and live there forever. But in order for him to do so, he has to overcome some obstacles, as you were talking about. Um, first, he has to build himself a home, and he has to do it in a certain amount of time before the rising tides come in and the great tidal wave, the big bad beast, the bully, mm -hmm. in the story, um, threatens his home and sweeps him back out to sea. So there's a real time element involved. He's on this race against time. And he has to do a lot of work, and he has to do it himself. And I think for a lot of children these days, um, you know, maybe being raised in this, this date and time, sure. you know, kids aren't always doing things for themselves. They have a lot of help, and they have a lot of support. So number one, the book is really teaching kids about how to persevere right. and to put their nose to the grindstone and to really just do the work. Yeah, to get in there and hard work really pays off. It makes a difference. And I think teaching that to kids early on, uh, even in the preschool years, really adds up later on. So I think that message is through uh, out the book. So I think that's really important. Um, and I want to get to the message that you have written about and where it came from, from your daughter. And I really thought that was something that was interesting to hear about. Well, it's really twofold. Um, my daughter was two years old, mm -hmm. and she was, we were on our way to the beach, okay. and we were on our way to Santa Barbara, actually, in the car, and she was in the back seat of the car playing with her little bare toes, oh. and she was babbling the nonsensical words, Corte Magor, Corte Magor. And my husband and I looked at each other, and we really? were like, what is she saying? What is that? She just kept saying Corte Magor over and over again. And so I fancy myself a bit of a poet, and so the book is written in prose. And I started, you know, basically creating the story right there on the spot. None have told this tale before of poor old Samuel Timor, a fiddler crab. So that's really how the story began. Um, and so when I said it was twofold, it's kind of my background kind of comes into play. Uh, a lot of um, who I am as a human being, um, I think, is, is uh, demonstrated throughout the book. I came from not so good circumstances, mm -hmm. a dysfunctional family. I was in foster care by the time I was 15 years old. And I had to learn very early on to pull myself up by my own bootstraps and learn how to, in many ways, take care of myself. And so you have that very big underlying theme in the book here. Right, and you know you're, you're coming from experience in teaching this throughout the book and talking about that throughout the book. And you really can give kids that message firsthand because you've been there. Not only have I been there, but I broke the cycle. You know, right. I didn't live that life. I knew that I didn't want to live that life that I was living as mm -hmm. a child. And I think as children, we have one of two choices. Mm -hmm. We can choose to become the product of our environment. And as we get older, some people choose to continue sure. that cycle. Right. Or we can choose to break free of the cycle. And I chose to break free. It was pure and simple for me. But it stemmed from, originally, mm -hmm. my love of books, my great love of books and learning that there was a life that was tangible and within Absolutely. my reach. I just had to reach out and want it and grab it. And so those themes are built into the book. And I think the theme of working hard for something mm -hmm. really resonates throughout the book. It's a strong theme that I think children learn a lot from. And in your case, you did this yourself, and you have certainly made that come 
through big time, I think, in the book. I did. I'm a, I'm a 20-year-old business owner. Um, I moved to California basically on my own accord, came mm -hmm. to California, built a family and a life for myself, um, and overcame a lot of obstacles on my own. Sure. I want kids to know that life isn't always peaches and cream, no matter who you are, and okay. no matter what circumstance you come from. But I do want the children, particularly, who have gone through something, right. to know that there is hope for themselves. They've just that they may have to do it themselves and, right. and Sam does a lot of work on his own. And how would you think this will help a lot of parents when they read the book with their kids? Where will the message come in for parents? I love that question because <laughs> I, I the, the story that just keeps coming to my mind is uh, Dr. Seuss's Oh the Places You'll Go. Sure. When my son and my daughter oh. were both little, I loved reading that book to them so much because it resonated with me. It just reminded me that even though now I'm an adult, right. I can still have dreams and that dreams are important to kind of go after. Right. And, you know, I think that this book in a lot of ways um, does the same thing. It reminds kids that they can be anything that they want to be right. um, and they can do anything that they want to do. And even though they may have naysayers and bullies and uh, people that kind of get in their way sometimes right. that they can in fact overcome. I think that's an important, it's an important message for parents to learn yes, too is. because a lot of times even parents will feel like oh my gosh things aren't going well right. I don't know what to do. You read this book and it's inspiring. It's an incredible inspiring story not only for the kids to read but for the parents to read along with them so I think that's really saying a lot. I think that makes a big difference. Um, and I think one of the best things about this book is that it has great graphics and pictures inside. Thank I think you. kids really will enjoy not only the story that you've told, but the pictures are really just so colorful and, uh, and the illustrations are just beautiful in there. They, they say a lot. Um, Thank you. And I think you know this particular book gives you the chance to dream big. And I think for you, um, that's something that you feel was very important in creating this book. Yeah, I think that I think that the overall message about dreaming big is the message that I want everybody to really understand. Mm -hmm. You know, just to touch back on those sure. parents that are reading the book a little bit. Right. Um, there are a lot of people uh, going through a lot in the economy, um, in their jobs, in the workplace, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that all of us kind of need that little light, you know, coming through the you know the clouds. And I think that yeah. um, a book as simple as this can really impact parents as well as mm -hmm. children. Now, you know, in in one part of the book, there's a big wave that represents the yeah. bullying sort of thing that kids can start to you know learn a little bit about. Right. Um, and you know that's a very popular topic among parents and, and schools now because they have to address it and they have to teach children about this uh, bullying sense that, that is very important now. And I think what you cover in the book is certainly uh, a, just a touch of it, uh, but how do you think that message comes through for kids and parents well, as you're talking about it? In the book, you know, you've got this heroic um, animal who's mm -hmm. doing heroic things, and right. I think by um, taking that 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 uh, wave mm -hmm. and, um, and not having it be a person, um, but having parents utilize that that wave as a character, mm -hmm. um, I think in some ways kids can relate to a character more than they can relate to a human because maybe they haven't experienced bullying yet. Right, so when right. you're young and you're three or four years old and mm -hmm. a parent tries to talk to you about bullying and pretty soon you're going into preschool mm -hmm. and that child doesn't have anything to equate that to, right. anything to gauge it against. Right, they wouldn't um, know. It's yeah. an impossible yeah. conversation. I mm -hmm. mean, especially if your children watch PBS all the time, right? Sure, absolutely. So um, they have nothing to equate it to. And so the, I think this, that this really, helps. Yeah, this really deals with that, you know, the naysayers and the bullies out there that you, you know what, you don't have to listen to them you can overcome that and right. you can be better and you can be right. bigger. I think that's what we learned from Samuel T. Moore is he can become better and bigger and overcome all this. Right. Um, and he does. And I think for kids to see that in a story form, right. it kind of softens that, that issue of bullying a little bit more. But yet, I think parents can actually have a conversation with them about it in a, in a, in a better way than just dealing with bullying itself. I think it right. shows it a little bit more in picture form and it gives them a little bit more that they can talk about. Uh, but I think that's important for kids and it was good that you put that in there. I thought that that was really important. 
And overcoming adversity, how do you think that comes about through the book? Well, you know, you've got this character, he's there, and you know, he's got lots of mm. things to contend with. He's got He's got the wave, and right. he's got the weather, and he's got you know he's these build his animals, house and, and he's doing it himself, and nobody's helping him. Right. And so there's a lot of adversary there. Um, he also doesn't succeed at first, right? And that's what I think is the most important thing is that you know the whole concept of try, try again, right. if all else fails, right. and. Um, he doesn't su succeed right away. He's got to figure mm -hmm. things out on his own, and um, he finally does, and so he's overcome that adversity. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that you really want to stretch uh, and, and tell kids about. You really want to go into that a little bit more, because there are a lot of things that you're not always going to be successful at. You may not always be really good at something. Sports, for one thing, a lot of kids find that you know, they, they want to give up because they're just not good at it. But it's really important to, to learn from that and say, you know what, just keep trying. You might be good at something else. You might be better at art than you are you know, right. in sports. And I think that message comes through with that um, when you, you, know, you go does. into that. It does, but I'm a huge advocate of not squelching anybody's dreams really? under yeah. any circumstances whatsoever. If a kid wants to go out and be a major league ball player and that's his dream, then Don't let him... Don't squash it. Just keep gosh, trying. Let him, let him have right. that dream. Keep going. Don't, yeah, give, um, him, give him all the uh, power to do that because that's what it is. Dream big. That's the message, I think, behind your it book really, as well. It really is. And while it may not always work out, mm -hmm. um, it may not always be in your best interest, it's important to understand as you get older that you'll start to compile, um, you know, I guess rationalization sure. on what is good for you and what isn't. And right. you have to, you kind of have to do that yourself. And people can tell you you can't yeah. do something, but you know, when somebody tells me I can't, that right. is the impetus for me doing something um, more or better or sure. uh, working harder at my goal. Now, as the author of the book, um, you must get a lot of feedback from audiences when you go out and read the book or talk about the book. Um, what kind of comments do you get from parents oh, and kids and both? You know, it was funny. I actually spoke at my son's school at, at uh, my son's school and. Um, there were some children that were a year younger than my son, and they went up to him and okay. said, your mom's book is so epic. Because epic. I read it oh, in an epic, epic. way. That's, that's I big. read it in a very epic way. Okay. Um, I read it with a buildup. And so, you know, I think that the, the, the delivery of a book is really important. I think sure. that different interpretations can happen from parents if they read a book differently to their child each time, which right. makes it kind of new, which is mm -hmm. kind of, you know, if you think about it, a really great thing. The other thing that I'm loving, the comment that I'm getting a lot, and I had no idea, that for whatever reason, children okay. with special needs are glomming onto this book, kids with autism, kids with Asperger's. I'm getting feedback on my Facebook page um, that a child will climb onto a plane and that will be what they carry mm, onto the plane. And, that's really important. And I haven't figured out, I would love to have somebody help me understand the psychology of why this book is um, appealing to kids with, with special needs, but I'm, I'm loving that. Probably because there, you know, there are struggles that uh, special needs kids do have and they do overcome them, which I think is important to know. Um, but I think that message probably resonates to kids um, who really learn from that. They learn that they can do anything too. They can just be as good as the next one and they can go out in the world and become someone very important too, just like Samuel T. Moore. <laughs> and I think that that's, I think that some of the sentiments that have, uh, some of the, uh, the conversations that I've had as a result of sure. that statement. Um, was that because Sam is is he's a little different looking if you if you he think is. about it he has one big claw he's and he has cute, one though. small claw. <laughs> Um, he is very cute. I think he's adorable. He's very cute. Um, I think that uh, the other thing that might be the compelling reason why why kids are glomming onto the book is because it's written in prose and it's a phonetically based book and there aren't a lot of phonetically based books right. written these days. And that's important. And I think it's really important. So, you know. Well, Tonya, thank you so much for joining us today and presenting your book, Samuel T. Moore of Corte Magor. It's a wonderful story for thank kids you. and parents both. Absolutely. Absolutely. So thanks for being on our thank show today. Thank you for having me. And thank all of you for being with us today on Our Ventura TV. I'm Sandra Cepak. See you next time.